What's up everybody, I'm Dane from Garage Strength and I'm diving deep into the topic on hormonal response to hypertrophy based training. And to start everything off, we've covered the, the sarcoplasmic hypertrophy based training and what that means for the strength world and what that means in resistance training and what that means from a physiological perspective. If you wanna brush up on that topic, click on the link down below that has the sarcoplasmic uh, hypertrophy training video. But for this topic in general, we're gonna be discussing a little bit based off of myofibrillar hypertrophy and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and what that means from a hormonal response and what our hormones do so we can optimize our recovery and ultimately lead to an increase in muscle mass. And so the biggest aspect to remember is that an increase in hormones lead to an increase and in an improvement in receptor interactions with hormones within the muscle cell and muscle fibers. So we have to recognize that there are receptors on our muscles, on our muscle fibers that are gonna be bringing in IGF-1 and testosterone so that we can then mobilize amino acids, which is gonna help us recover from that damage that might be occurring or the mechanical loading that might be happening from a resistance training session. And there's two key hormone responses that we're gonna cover that involve hypertrophy-based training. And the first is IGF-1, or insulin growth factor one. And this is something, this is a hormone that is very, very similar to insulin. And insulin growth factor one, or IGF-1, is found within satellite cells. It's found within myofibers, which is why, again, if we're training in that lower, that lower rep range, but a very high intensity rep range, we can actually increase our IGF-1 simply by adding more myofibers but it's also found in Schwann cells, okay? So what are Schwann cells? They are located on, the, on nerves and they can increase conduction and can increase that electrical stimulation that our brain is sending to the muscles to increase force. And if, that, if the Schwann cells are, active, are activated, there's gonna be a little bit more IGF-1, which is gonna lead to a faster summation and, and a faster tightness from an electrical stimulation perspective so that we can lift more weights, okay? So IGF-1, not only is it helping us when we're gonna be recovering from that training session, it's also gonna be helping us during that training session because it's going to increase the electrical capacity of our central nervous system. IGF-1 is also gonna, it is something else, it's gonna activate satellite cells and satellite cells when they're activated also will release IGF-1 which is going to increase that, uh, the, the presence of IGF-1 throughout our body. One of the big key factors that we want to understand is that IGF-1 is going to be elevated for 72 hours post resistance training. So let's go back to that sarcoplasmic hypertrophy video where we're thinking about hammering out bench presses for 10 to 12 reps or, or 10 reps with a slow eccentric. Now all of a sudden our IGF-1 starts to go through the roof and that's going to convert to something called mechano growth factor. Okay, so MGF, and you can Google this, Google MGF, down below, you, I'll put the link for Wikipedia MGF, you can sit there and read what that does, and it's going to mobilize amino acids, it's going to increase our body's capability to improve protein synthesis, and again, mobilize amino acids so that our body can recover effectively, and pull those satellite cells out of their, their reserve, and then start to stimulate those satellite cells to improve our recovery and to increase either the myofibular density or to enhance and protect that cell membrane of the muscle of the muscle cells so that we can not only increase the size of the muscle cell but also increase that strength. And the second big hormone that's going to be involved with uh, with all things related to hypertrophy is testosterone. Okay, so the testosterone is going to be released out of the Leydig cells in our testes, right? So testosterone is one of the most potent hormones when in regards to increasing muscle mass. So from a, from a, if we're going to be training natural, we've got to understand how to increase our testosterone. And some of that is going to be having proper rest, making sure we're getting optimal sleep, but also what are we doing in training? And we, we've seen research and we, we know that big lifts like back squats or, or deadlifts or uh, front squats or, or power cleans, full cleans, bench press, these multi-joint lifts can increase our body's response and release of testosterone. But more importantly, we know that when we get over four or five sets, 
our testosterone will be released at an even greater rate. So it's very important to understand the value in doing six, seven, eight, ten sets of certain exercises if we want to ultimately increase our muscle mass and optimize that release of testosterone. So again, they're released out of the Leydig cells and the testes, and it's gonna testosterone will increase the stimulation of growth hormone. So growth hormone is gonna metabolize. Uh, triglycerides, which is going to increase our lean muscle mass. We're going to be less, we won't be as fat. <clears throat> and it's going to increase IGF-1, which will then turn into MGF, and which will then optimize our protein synthesis so that we can recover a little bit faster. Um, one little quick tidbit here is to understand that with MGF, if this is, if this is elevated for 72 hours post-workout, this is something where Oftentimes people are just rushing to go, you know, crush our protein shakes like I just did. I just worked out and I had a protein shake right afterwards. It's more out of habit, but it doesn't need to be within 30 minutes. If, if we've had protein within two hours of our training session and we've also had protein, we've also had a, a training session the day prior, our MGF is up. We've been eating a ton of protein anyway, and that hormone is going to be metabolizing and utilizing uh, amino acids consistently throughout the day so that we can recover from whatever program, whatever stimulus that we're providing on, on the organism. So it's important to realize that we don't have to have protein immediately post-workout as long as we're getting enough protein throughout the day and as long as we're doing consistent exercises and consistent work to stimulate this hormonal response. But going back into testosterone, testosterone will also stimulate satellite cells uh, to get out of their reservoir and then all of a sudden to increase uh, myofiber density or to um, to protect the, the the membrane of the of the muscle cell which is going to then release IGF-1 so they sort of work together we've got to remember multiple sets and on top of this it's going to increase collagen fibers which is going to increase uh, bone mineral density which in turn is going to help us later on in life when we're older and we want to prevent osteoporosis but the collagen fiber increase will lead to a little bit stronger tendon, which is essentially what communicates to your muscle of what amount of force your muscle can actually handle without getting hurt. And we're gonna cover that in a future video on the Golden Tendon Organ. And so all of this is important to understand, but the big key is that increasing these hormones is gonna to lead to an increase in, in the interaction of the receptor sites within the muscle, and then the muscle fiber is going to be able to use these hormones effectively to recover and increase muscle protein synthesis. And so we're gonna gain more lean muscle mass and metabolize those triglycerides so that over time we can lean out and increase, most importantly, that lean muscle mass. So if you like this content, head over to garagetrunk.com. We got a 12-week muscle mass building program. We go deep into a couple different blogs where we've got sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, myofibular hypertrophy. All of those are linked below that you can get a little bit more in detail with what this topic is and how you can increase your muscle mass. Make sure you like, subscribe, share all over YouTube, all over Facebook, share everywhere. Peace.